come out into the bay. I've got a set of neat tides at the minute. And I'm going to uh, drift a couple of wrecks. And then I'm going to uh, try and anchor up when, when the water goes slack. Just been feathering some mackerel. I'll put the slow jig down just in case. The jigs do seem to find the better fish. Fish that have been getting on the feathers have generally been like that size. And the jigs have been picking them up and they've been that size. Go and see if we can find a wreck and get some ling out of it. Right now, I've got myself out to a wreck and I've used some of the fresh mackerel on one of my my wreck, my wreck rigs, my scratching rigs and all I'm going to do is I'm planning on just lowering down to the bottom and um, bouncing up alongside the wreck now there's a good chance uh, because you're fishing so close to a wreck there's a good chance of getting snagged up in a wreck so you've got to be quite on the ball at the same time but if you're not close to the wreck you're not going to catch a fish We should be drifting back in that way now, so hopefully we'll get to show you a ling. Now ling, they do have quite a positive bite, but at the same time you, you don't want to strike too soon. If, you, if your rod's being wrenched from your hands, get it set, get it away. Otherwise let it have a little bit of a chew, then set the hook into it. Currently in 198 feet of water. We're fishing with a 10 ounce lead. We're about two hours of the flood left. Just missed the wreck, so I'm just going to try and circle back onto it. There's the wreck coming up now. At the moment, there's just no drift at all. I'm just sat on top of it. To get a more positive bite, it's better to have a bit of a drift. Because if the bait's moving past, the fish has got to take it quite quite aggressively, otherwise it could oh that was a good bite there. Whatever it is, it's playing with me. <laughs> Is it found the wreck? I managed to get moving for a second. Cheeky bugger. I've had my birds away. Picked up something, probably a pouty. Give a bit of a bite, it's not very big, whatever it is. Whiting, big old fat whiting. If this wreck's just full of waiting, I think I might move on to another one. And letting the line down, keep your thumb on the spool like that. Otherwise, when it hits the bottom, it'll just overrun. In the summer, I've just had bites straight away. Mm. 
that's going to be the problem because I'm fishing with big baits and big hooks and there's loads of small fish down there you just pull your little bait, pull your baits to little pieces and never find the hook All right, new wreck try again slightly deeper this time 238 feet Ling aren't renowned as being great fighters. Often what happens is they get halfway up and their swim bladder blows. It's like pulling in a pulling in a wave. Whereas a conger will fight all the way to the surface and all the way down again. No. Just a foul up to waiting. I can't seem to get away from these guys today. with a very big eel and I'm trying to reel the other rod in so we're going to stuck on the wreck I'm saying it's a big eel, that's what it feels like God, Jesus Christ. Well, I wanted to catch a link. I definitely did.
Ling's what I wanted. My God, Ling was what I got. Look at the size of that. Jesus Christ. It's five foot long. Gotta be well over 30 pound. What an absolute brute. Taken on my wrecking rig. Look at the size of its head. Look. What an absolute monster. I was sure that was a conger that big. That is phenomenal. <laughs> Why can you never find anything when you need it? T bar, come on, where's my T bar? Yeah. Sometimes when they're stuck down deep, all you have to do is just pull it on through the gills, take the hook off. But that was what it was caught on. My wrecking rig, a 10 row cox and raw meat hook. That's another bad thing about Ling, them gill rakers, just like pins. Feels like another good one. Miles off the wreck there. On this one, I just had a running ledger with about three foot of hook length. Could be another, another link. Two for two. Here's your conger eel. He'll be, he'd be willing to double figures, he'll be 14 or 15 pound. You see where he's hooked? Perfect hook hold. Again, a 10 or meat hook, Cox and Raw meat hook. Brilliant hooks. Strong as you like. On my T bar as well. T barring these guys off, all you have to do if you'll hold still, run the T bar down the bend of the hook like that, use the fish's own weight to drop itself off. Oh, carnage. Right. I would normally let that eel go straight away, but I record the length and girth on the weight and submit it to the British Congo Club so that they, the information can be sent away and used to track growth rates and uh, to see what type of, see what fish we've got around. Also, it's to create a length by weight chart. Same as what you do with sharks. See if we can get a scale on this link. Like I was saying, 99 times out of 100. When you're fishing deep, you catch a link, it's dead. 
They suffer really bad with barotrauma. Thirty-eight, forty, thirty-eight. Call it thirty-nine pound. Crikey! Whoa! I nearly broke my arm. Give you one more money shot. What an absolute monster! The width of his head. One inch is long. Fourteen inches girth. Here we go. Let's go in back. <laughs> Them guys don't mess about. I think I need to sit down. Seems to have worked again. You, when you get a fish moving, if you can keep its head going in the right direction, if you can keep its head going towards the surface, you don't have too much trouble with it. And other times, when you stop to wind and you stop to pump it up and down, that's when it digs. This is quite twangy, this feels like a conger eel. Oh no! It's another great link. Let me see. Look, it's taken top hook of my wrecking rig. This one will be about ten pounds. It's a shame really because after that monster I don't really need another link. Let's see if this one will go back. 